Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's Appraisal Buzzcast. With me, as always, is our host, Hal Humphreys. Let me bring him in. Hal, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Jim. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing amazing. We've got a great episode at Summit. We had a great conversation with Allison Rodriguez. Let me bring her in. It was my first time meeting her in person, but uh, it's just so great to get to talk to some of the appraisers there on site. Allison, thank you so much for being here today. Yes, well, thank you, gentlemen, so much for having me today. It's, it's an honor to be here. I'm I'm an avid listener and and certainly enjoyed meeting you in person, Jim. And of course, Hal, great seeing you as usual. Always, always good to see you. Well, um, you know, the appraisal buzz does a pretty good job of talking to some top level uh, thought leaders in the business, and I think you are. Um, you're one of those people that is going to end up being one of the top level thought leaders in this business. Um, I know you're relatively new to the business. So Allison, for those that don't know you, tell us, tell us, you know, who you are, where you are and kind of how you got into this business. Sure thing. Well, I'm, my name is Allison Rodriguez and I am from the great state of Texas. So down currently in South Texas, um, San Antonio area, originally from uh, West Texas, but um, but I call San Antonio home now, and um, and like many appraisers, I do come from uh, you know a different background. I I um, some of y'all I know how you were born into this, um, but but I, I have you know a vast background, um, mostly coming from high school um, education and math, and and I you know was looking to transition out of it and, and looked into a couple of different opportunities, you know, dabbled in some sales positions and things and, and had the opportunity to, to join a firm that needed some help, um, learned a little bit more about the industry. And of course you start taking principles and procedures and you just, you, you jump in full force. i um, certainly went all in and, and enjoying it and I'm currently practicing in South Texas. And when did you start the process of becoming an appraiser? That would be in the summer of 2020. So, okay. so a little over three years ago, just to put that in perspective, like Hal said, being new in the industry. Well, I think it's interesting that you, you came to it, not from a family background. You didn't have, you know, a dad that was an appraiser. You, you, you found it kind of on your own. Um, and literally basically by yourself, you came from, zero to 60 in, uh, you know, just a little over three years, which is pretty impressive. Wow. Thank you so much. And, and again, I attribute a lot of that to, to the, you know, the, the support and the appraisers that, that I've worked with and certainly getting, you know, involved in state organizations and national organizations keep me very motivated, um, keep me very involved and knowledgeable. Um, so very honored to be in this great profession and thankful for the opportunity. I love it. Well, that's going to lead into what we're going to talk about next. But before we get into um, state organizations and associations and how to kind of keep yourself uh, up to date in the industry, I do want to take just a minute and give uh, a shout out to one of our commercial sponsors. LIA Administrators and Insurance Services, serving valuation professionals since 1978. We provide e &O insurance with a commitment to superior customer service, outstanding liability education, and unmatched claim defense, benefiting over 10,000 real estate professionals nationwide. Explore our exclusive appraiser liability education by Peter Christensen and cost-effective seminars designed to foster your growth. Our underwriters, with an average of 26 years of experience each, are dedicated to supporting appraisers. Visit liability.com to discover how LIA can safeguard your business. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Hal Humphreys. I'm joined today by Allison Rodriguez. You're listening to the Buzzcast, and Allison is new to the business. Um, there's no other way to say it. She's been been kind of in and around the business for three years, but she recently became certified, and we're really excited about her being a part of the profession. Allison, you mentioned earlier, you know, the importance of support from other appraisers. Um, and you mentioned state organizations and associations and stuff like that. Um, talk to me about the importance of that support from association members. Absolutely. It's, it is, it's crucial. I believe, I know I hear a lot, you know, how you mentioned sometimes appraisers just like to 
to sit in their basement and do their work and, and get out and come back in and type up reports and analyze. But but the getting out and, and talking with other appraisers specifically, you know, again, when you can talk yourself into a corner, you know, on an assignment and things like that, and also finding out what your peers are doing. But really, it's, you know, more about being a part of a very conscious group of appraisers who just want to keep improving their practice and making, you know, and, and you're making your products, your reports, your um, more more meaningful, you know, and to to the the users, um, we want we want something very mean, meaningful. Tim Anderson will say transformative. Um, we just want to keep improving our practice, and just like there, you know, what was recently said at the summit, there's a lot of data out there, but now it's up to you to to analyze that and actually make it meaningful. And there's lots of methods, you know, not lots, but there's methods and techniques. Let's talk about what, you know, exactly we're doing and how we're doing it. And I think coming, you know, talking with a lot of new appraisers, we, these organizations have, have connected us all, even across the country. And what we really like is the specifics, you know, there are a lot of times there can be talks around, well, this is how you could do it, you know, or this, but we, we love specifics and we hang on every word. So so when you talk about state organizations what is your organization down there in texas that you're a part of well we are the association of texas appraisers the ata and so very <laughs> fortunate to be in part of that organization it's one that is very well established um and so we have awesome uh, conferences you know throughout the year and um, I'm currently serving on the membership committee for that as well. And so please, this will be my plug, reach out. Um, I will help you get involved and, and can certainly share a lot about the benefits. Um, but it's an, it's an amazing organization, you know, to be a part of and, and also, you know, within the NAA, helping other states. You know, if you're interested in starting up something in your state, I will be glad to help you with that. Yeah, and you brought up the NAA, the National Association of Appraisers. Um, obviously, I'm a fan. I've made you know no small noise about the fact that I'm I'm a proud member of the NAA. Um, I was elected to the board of directors last year, and I'm really excited about that. You know, I've I've watched you over the past couple of years at the various conferences. Um, you know, the NAA conferences, Val Expo, those kind of things. And the way you reach out to people and introduce yourself and talk about what it is you're working on, you know, I've seen you get some basically mentoring from some seasoned appraisers from across the country. Um, would you have been able to, to make those connections without being a member of the NAA? No, absolutely not. How? Absolutely not. And it's, it's an honor to be, like you said, to connect connected to those folks. And that's, the other thing, you know, some of the intangible benefits of these organizations that I, I really can't put, you know, a value on because of the mentorship of those in my market, not in my market, and and all of the accomplishments of those uh, mentors, coaches. That's I feel that is so important in this industry and in any in industry, but you need it. And and the NAA folks are are willing to they are willing to help you there and you're able to reach out um like i said about the specifics and it could be anything from you know the current assignment that you're working on or hey you know what i got this great business opportunity possibly a job offer this or that you know could you advise me based on your experience so many of these leaders like said thought leaders mentors coaches in the industry have have so much experience they can offer some great advice and you know let's let's get a little bit specific here you know you know mr tim anderson have you have you availed yourself of sending reports to tim to have him look at them yes i have done that and and i know we i mean i know that can make a lot of folks sometimes very uncomfortable you know but i think we all need to be a little uncomfortable to to get better right if you're not you're not changing you're not getting better and so absolutely, I mean, his his contribution to to, you know, both tenured and new appraisers in this industry is much appreciated. To be specific, I sat down with him um, in Sacramento and and he makes himself completely available for any questions. We can go over details um, of the report, the analyses all of that and it's it's very much appreciative what what um, you know you guys are doing as as a group. 
Yeah, and um, I know you you and I had a conversation at the summit. You had you had spent some time with Joanne. I can't remember her last name off the top of my head. We're gonna have to edit that. What's her last name? Apostle. Yeah. All right. So I know you and I had a conversation at the summit um, just a couple of weeks ago. You had spent some time with Joanne Apostle, who is who's a longtime member of the NAA, um, and you said you had gotten some mentoring from her. Talk to me about what that looks like. Absolutely. Joanne Apostle is is a mentor, a coach, and now, you know, a very dear friend of mine. And specifically what that looks like are, you know, schedule calls. She she donates a lot of her time to um, helping, you know, prospective trainees, trainees and appraisers. So we we have weekly calls um, and meetings and talking about you know, doing market analysis. Also just um, a big part of it is is customer service and how you're running your business. And, yeah. you know, since we are in that business, she's certainly very um, knowledgeable, experienced, and greatly appreciated. So, so uh, the reason I'm asking you those kind of specific questions about the NAA in particular is, you know, at the conference, you meet these people, you know, we spend time with Craig Capella. We, we see Tim Anderson. We see Scott Cullen. We see, you know, all of the usual suspects and we build friendships. Like I, I consider you a friend and, and I know you've considered Joanne a friend and, and Tim is a friend of mine. Like there's, there's this camaraderie that goes on, but I, what I'm trying to illustrate, and I think you've done a really good job of explaining it is for newly minted appraisers who are involved in this business, if you join an organization like the NAA um, and you, you build that networking group, um, you can go from point A to point B very quickly if you reach out to those people who are willing to help you. And members of the NAA are, by and large, willing to help you. So I think, Allison, and tell me if I'm wrong about this, my experience with the NAA coming to it later in my career has been that I've got all of these thoughtful, methodical, caring appraisers that I now call friends that are willing to take a phone call and answer a question or spend some time and help me through a problem. Um, I think it's just a fantastic thing, but for a new appraiser, I can't think of a better way to kind of kick your career into hyperdrive. I, I agree. I agree, Hal. And, and I and I'm again honored to be in and amongst all of y'all and appreciative of everything. But it's like I said, it is just getting it's getting started, getting in, but being very intentional about it too. You know, sitting down. I mean, what are your goals as an appraiser? Where are you at? And I actually am telling myself this because I need to do this again. Um, you know, and a, a shout out to Pam Teal as well. She'll say, Well, where what are your goals, Allison? You know, where do you want to be? And and but being very intentional about all of it. And and I love it. We we have great conversations. We are now friends and we may, like I said, have an adult beverage here or there. But most of y'all know some, some, especially in Texas, they'll say, we're going to go to dinner. We're not talking about appraising. And I'm like, yes, we are, you know, so <laughs> I promise I'll be fine sometimes, but, but very intentional about it and what your goals are so that you can communicate these things with, with coaches and mentors. And, and that only helps you, like you said, to get on the fast track. Yeah. And, and the interesting thing to me is like, you know, some of the coaching and, and mentor relationships, they're not necessarily formalized. There's sometimes not even any exchange of, 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 of money to, to buy that time. It's just sometimes it is, um, but sometimes it's just, you know, peers helping out peers. Um, anyway, um, I think I think your experience with the NAA really illustrates how somebody new to the business can jumpstart their career um, and get involved. I do need to take just a minute to uh, let one of our commercial sponsors have a word and then we'll be right back. The Dictionary of Real Estate Appraisal, 7th edition, is a landmark text that reflects the depth and breadth of appraisal knowledge. Each entry, definition, and reference has been painstakingly researched and designed to reflect an expert understanding of issues that currently impact the profession. The new dictionary is an essential authoritative resource for all appraisers. The dictionary is divided into two sections, an alphabetical listing of terms directly related to real estate appraisal and an addendum with topical glossaries and compilations of terms used by related real estate professionals. 
Find it at appraisalinstitute.org slash dictionary seven. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Hal Humphreys. I'm joined today by Allison Rodriguez. You're listening to the Appraisal Buzz. And Allison and I have been talking about um, the benefits of being a member of an organization and the various ways you can use that to kind of jumpstart your career. Allison, you know, I've been in this business a long time, um, 30 plus years. I've seen the market go up. I've seen it go down. I've seen it go up again. I've seen it go down again. You jumped into this head first, right? And quite possibly you got, you know, you got cer certified in quite possibly one of the lowest points of the appraisal profession. Everybody's worried about volume. Volume is down. They're not getting as much work in the door. How do you, as a new appraiser, how do you get business? That's a great question. And it's, and certainly, like I said, started out when, you know, things were very different than when I was, you know, a trainee. And so how do I get business? Like you said, I want to go back to the customer service aspect. Um, the, the lending work that I am doing, you know, I'm providing the absolute best customer service that I can. I, I think, you know this a little bit about me. I, I know who's you know behind the computer. I can make phone calls. I certainly communicate very, very well and often. Um, but also, again, talking about uh, you know appraiser education and things, appraiser e learning. I'll give give y'all a shout out. Um, classes that that do help out with getting non lender work. And I am out there right now um, giving presentations at brokerages and things like that. That's helping me even in a slow time diversify my business i found that these um that agents out there do want to know what what um you know something is worth prior to listing it so doing some pre-listing appraisals um but also besides it being slower for for appraisers that have been around it's given me time to work on my practice as well and so kind of back to what y'all y'all talk about um sharpening your your tools and and things like that i Honestly, I could I could work 18 hours a day probably. Do I need to? No, but there's so much you can be doing. So much it never ends. I love it. Allison, um uh, the value that this um episode of the podcast has, I think is going to be incredible. And I'm thinking specifically of younger appraisers, trainees, people from the ADI group that are coming into this business. Um there's a lot of fear and trepidation about how do I get into this business? How do I do this thing? And they can see that you came at it from no personal history being in the business. You just kind of decided, I want to do this, um, muscled through all the coursework, got the stuff done. And then you figured out how to, um, how to become a better appraiser in a really short period of time. Uh, and I think that's going to be really valuable. Um, for new appraisers and and people coming in through the ADI uh, process and and the new Perea process as well, I do want to ask you to give um, new appraisers, people coming through the ADI program, people coming in through the the, the newly opened Perea process, give them one bit of advice from someone in your position um, as one thing they could do today or tomorrow to, to maybe quicken the process? Certainly what a lot of what we've talked about, how get involved, you know, want them to get involved, start getting exposure in person as well, because you can make a huge impression in person. And also th these aren't even my original words to a mentor and even someone from the GSEs has told me be a problem solver be a problem solver that's what we do but there are so many problems you know to be solved out in the industry where you can add value to someone else you know it's another appraiser's practice and to their business i love it um one final thing i want to talk about before we bring jim back in to talk about um a possible anonymous appraiser question i'm sorry we're going to hit you with that but we are um you know i have been intrigued by the perea process um, and, and how that is unrolling. I'm curious if you've had a similar, almost not jealous streak, but man, I wish that were available when I was coming up through the business, um, getting that degree and that level of training 
would that have been really good for you to, to have been able to go through Perea, even though you had a mentor, even though you, I had a mentor as well. I learned the old school way. Um, is there part of you that kind of wishes you could have access to some of that Perea business? It is so funny that you ask, Cal, because I was just talking to one of my peers. She's in another state and we talked about this just the other day. We, we just want to go, we're interested in, in going through it. We think it's great. And we're thinking because Think about it like this, like I said, the supervisor training setup is it depends on what kind of business your supervisor does. And, and maybe that's all that you're exposed to. And so you do need to roll up your sleeves when you get out there and start practicing. And so absolutely, we, she and I were just talking about this. We, we want to give Priya a try and, and maybe we'll just start taking classes towards another uh, designation or something. But absolutely, I think it's a great opportunity. And I already know a lot of appraisers that want to get out there and, and hire those graduates. So. Okay. Very good. Uh, Jim Morrison, do we by chance have an anonymous appraiser question for today? Well, this is not an anonymous appraiser. This is a Jim Morrison question. So <laughs> this I'm commandeering this time to, for my own personal gain. Good, but, good full disclosure there. I like the way you didn't like <laughs> throw that off on some somebody asking for a friend. Yeah, yeah. Just a friend asked this. Uh, yeah. So in in my neighborhood across the street from me, somebody is going to sell their house. Their neighbor has a friend who wants to buy the house, and I guess they're close. So they would like to be neighbors. So why I'm concerned is this is a perfect comp for my house. It's got the backyard. It's like I'm afraid that it's going to be used in a comp when it didn't actually see the real open market. This is a handshake, you know, behind closed doors, arm's length. I don't know if it's an arm's length transaction, but do I need to be worried about how this will affect my home value? I would say that if it doesn't hit the MLS system, there is a good chance that a lot of appraisers might not pick that up as a sale. Allison, would you agree with that? I would agree. And then I also, again, newer appraiser, I would go back to like what Jim was saying. I would question, does it meet the definition of market value is, is the big thing for me. Yeah, absolutely. And, and here's the thing, Jim, you can hop on back in here. I think if you, since you asked the question, we can, we can have you be involved in this conversation. Um, so just because, you know, somebody's next door neighbor's dog's previous owner wants to buy the house doesn't necessarily mean it's not arm's length. Just because it wasn't shown through the MLS system doesn't mean it didn't get, you know, fair and open marketing. But that's that comes back to the appraiser's job. And Allison said this earlier, you know, our job as appraisers is to analyze information. And part of the information that we have to analyze is we we're supposed to go out and verify the transactions. So if I ran across this sale, I would want to gather as much information about it as possible. And I would call the buyer and I would call the seller or the agents involved and say, hey, What's the story here? Did they pay a fair price for it? Um, was it, was it, you know, I know it didn't hit the MLS, so it wasn't openly marketed, but did a couple other people look at it too? Um, and I would ask those questions. And at that point, if I was comfortable that it was an arm's length transaction, there's no real relationship between the parties. It's just a friend of a friend. Um, and their motivations were fairly typical for the market. I might consider using it if it's a good transaction. Allison, anything to add to that? Well, great, great answer, Hal. I agree. And like I said, I probably like I said I wouldn't discount it right away. I'm, I'm a, you'll, you'll find me calling agents all the time to verify. And, and I mean, I'll, you know, even on the ones in MLS, I'm like, what's the story on this? And I'm ready to explain to my client why I did and didn't or did not use it. So, does that help? Yeah, absolutely. So, don't be a nosy neighbor. Don't get involved. But. Uh... <laughs> Just be aware of it. <laughs> I love it. Well, um, Jim, do we have anything else we need to cover today? No, I think we covered everything. In that case, for Jim Morrison and Allison Rodriguez, I'm Hal Humphreys, and that is your Appraisal Buzzcast for this week.